In today's photography tutorial, I'm going to walk you through step by step in creating a beautiful image of a tulip. We're going to go through all of the techniques that you're going to need to do this, including setting up your camera, your composition, your settings, your background, and your lighting. I'm going to get started, so I'll see you in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and today we're shooting tulips. This flower photography tutorial is going to be uh, very, very structured, a little bit different to how I would normally approach this in a more freeform style. Today I'm going to show you everything that I do to create a single image of one of these tulips. I'm going to uh, jump right in, get started by setting up my camera. So first things first, I am shooting on a tripod today. I like to shoot on a tripod simply so that I can set up everything in front of my camera and not have to worry too much about recomposing my shot every time I pick up and put down my camera. My camera's going to stay where it is from the very beginning and I'll change what's in front of the camera to get the image right. I'm shooting on a Nikon D5600 today with a 100mm macro lens. Now you don't need a macro lens for um, this kind of shot, it's not a macro shot. I've moved much further back so it's, it's pretty much acting as a standard 100mm lens. You can use whatever lens gets you close enough to your flower to fill the frame without, being, uh, without the flower being too small in your frame. So uh, don't worry too much about your kit at this point, you just need to be be able to get your flower a nice size in your viewfinder. Speaking of our flower, we also need a way to uh, position our nice little stem and get it stood up so that we can get uh, all the way around it with our camera. The way that I've done that is simply by popping it into a bottle. I like to use a bottle uh, because of the thin neck here, it's going to stand our flower upright and make it a little bit easier for us to uh, position our flower and our stem exactly where we need it without it uh, drooping over too much as it would in say a vase. You can also use um, any kind of clamps or uh, crocodile clips that you have to hold the stem in place, um, but bear in mind that that will damage your flower. Having it sat here in water means that it will last a little bit longer for us to shoot and it won't start to droop. My tulip is sat down on my coffee table in its bottle and my camera and tripod are actually surprisingly far back. This gives me a really good amount of my flower in my frame with a little bit of space all the way around the edges. You'll also notice that uh, the background of my image is black and that's because I placed uh, a black backdrop down behind the flower. Uh, combined with our lighting and our settings, this is going to mean that uh, we don't get any light coming from our backdrop. All I've done is throw a black sheet over the sofa that's in the corner of my room and that gives us enough of a dark background uh, so that we can actually get a black background in our image uh, without having to push our settings too far like we did in our black background tutorial that didn't use a backdrop. Using a backdrop here uh, is just going to let us have a little bit better settings and not have to push things quite as far as we did in that other video. Now that I have my tulip in place and my camera on its tripod, uh, it's time to fine tune my composition a little bit. Uh, I've got a ball head attachment on my uh, tripod which makes it really really easy for getting the exact uh, angle of the camera uh, to make sure that my flower is straight. It's much easier to uh, manipulate the angle of your camera than it is to try and get a flower to stand up perfectly straight, so a ball head attachment really helps with that. It also means that I can easily flip my camera over uh, to portrait mode um, so that I can take the maximum uh, resolution picture of my flower without wasting any of my frame on just empty background space. We can always add a little bit of background into our shots later on, uh, seeing as our background is going to be black. Let's talk quickly about settings. The settings that I'm using right now are fairly average because it's a fairly well lit room and the ambient light is giving us a little bit of light on our flower. I will be adding some extra lighting in a minute so these settings are going to change, um, but for now I'm shooting at ISO 500, 1 60th of a second and f8. That's giving me a fairly well lit image and a decent depth of field to shoot our flower without having to uh, focus stack anything. 
Now I'm going to add a little bit of lighting and see if we can't make the colours pop a little bit and add that extra something to our image. To light my image and bring it to the next level, I'm of course going to be using the Adapter Look Studio. Now, the Adapter Look Studio, if you've not seen it before, is a continuous light source that has multiple uh, flexible bendy arms which plug into the control pod that you see here and that is going to give us a nice bright light source that we can maneuver into place anywhere that we'd like on our flower. Now there's a couple of things that I want to try out here. The first being how to make our colours pop a little bit on um, our tulip because we have these nice reds and we also have a big uh, green stem and leaf to light. So the first thing that I'm going to focus on is how to get a little bit of light shining through those petals at the front of the flower. The lighting arms that I'm going to be using today are two white lighting arm S's. These are the brighter version of our normal white lighting arm. The first thing that I'm going to do is bring one of them around the back of the, uh, the petals so that we can actually try and shine a light through those petals, which should give us a much more vivid red colour uh, from the petals themselves. Um, now, as you're doing this, you need to um, pay special attention to where the shadows are falling on your petals. Let me just uh, hit record here so that you can see exactly what I mean. Uh, as I move my lighting around, we're catching a lot of um, shadows from the petals at the back, as well as the petals at the front even. What I want to do is try and get as few uh, shadows on the front petals as possible while still catching a little bit of light up here on the back petals as well. I'm liking how that looks at the moment, but we can fine tune this as much as we like to try and get as much of that red light shining through as possible with as few sh shadows as possible. The next thing that you'll notice is that the head of our flower is far brighter than the stem and the leaf, so the next thing we're going to do is bring in our other lighting arm to light up that leaf. I'm just going to plug it in down here and bend it around so that it lights up our leaf. Now that's looking uh, a lot better to my eye, um, especially if I now adjust my settings a little bit to compensate for the new light. Something that I do want to do though is diffuse this front light so that it's a little bit less harsh. So I'm just going to snap a diffuser on there and then I can fine tune that lighting a little bit so it lights up our leaf and then also some of our stem. Now that we have some light to play with, uh, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to move your lights around, keep looking uh, through your live viewfinder, keep checking those shadows and find the most pleasing spot for your lighting to be. I do like this uh, method of shining light through the petals to get a little bit of extra colour, um, but you might uh, prefer to light them from the front. Uh, let's do that quickly and see what results we get. I'm just going to diffuse this other light and bring it around the front here. And you'll see that we're actually getting uh, some reflections from these petals. Um, these tulips in particular have a very um, shiny surface to their petals. Um, it's almost like a, a waxy film on the petal to protect it. This can cause a little bit of a problem when you try to light the petals from the outside um, because it's going to give you those reflections of your light source, um, both diffused and even more so when it's undiffused. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to stick with lighting them from the back and getting those uh, very vivid, bright reds coming through. You do need to make sure that your light source isn't uh, in your frame or in your frame as little as possible so that it's easy to Photoshop out afterwards. I'm liking where we're at with this, so it's back to the camera to do a little bit of fine tuning with our settings. Back behind the camera, you just need to make sure that the changes that you've made to your scene, i.e. your flower and your lighting, haven't affected your image too much. You can be doing this on the fly, of course, by uh, moving your live view around so that you can look back towards your camera and check that things are turning out exactly how you'd expect. That's one of the advantages of continuous light like this. You can add light in and see the results without actually having to take a shot. 
Um, when you do make some changes uh, to your lighting, you're obviously going to need to counteract that or compensate for it using your settings. I've changed my settings just a little bit here. We're still at ISO 500. Uh, we're still at F8 to get a nice depth of field, um, but I've upped my shutter speed from 1 60th of a second to 1 1 20th. That'll help a little bit with any um, movement of the subject or camera shake. Uh, I'm on a tripod, but uh, my floor is not particularly stable, so it should help with a little bit of um, wobble if we get any. Uh, speaking of our depth of field and our focus, that's the last thing that we're going to need to check before we start taking our shots. Um, there's a really good little tip on making sure that uh, everything is in focus. If you're using uh, manual focus like I am, uh, you do need to zoom in and make sure that uh, your focus is in the right spot. This is not so much of a concern if you've got autofocus on your lens, but I do recommend making sure that your camera has chosen the right spot on your image uh, to focus on. It can sometimes choose some strange uh, points on your image to decide to focus on, maybe on the edge of the leaf rather than on the flower itself. Either way, I'm going to very quickly zoom in on my image and then I can get a very, very precise adjustment of my focus to make sure that that leaf, uh, the petal on the very front of my flower is the subject of our focus. Now that we've done that, we can start taking some pictures. I'm pretty happy with how this shot is turning out so far, but there is one last little trick that I want to try out. And that's by adding a little bit of water to my flower. I want to see if we can't make a little bit of extra visual interest by creating some water drops on the petals. Uh, I've got a little spray bottle here, and this one you can actually um, adjust the nozzle here to change how fine you want that spray to be. So I'm going to put it on the, the minimum possible setting here and get some very fine spray. Um, I'm going to stand quite far away from my flower and just give it a few very quick blasts to see if I can't get a couple of water drops to stick on my flower. Once you've done a little bit of this, it might be worth uh, adjusting your lighting a little bit and checking that uh, there's not a more interesting angle that you can now get on your, um, on your flower. Because we've added those water drops, the reflections are actually going to work in our favor. We can move our lighting off to the side and uh, pick up on all of those little beads of water on the flower and we might get a little bit more uh, visual interest in our shot as well. This is, of course, only one way to approach photographing a flower like this, especially when your flowers are as beautiful and colourful as these tulips. There are as many different approaches as there are different styles of photography and different types of flower. If you want to see some other types of flower photography and macro photography, make sure to check out the playlist, which I'll link in the top right hand corner now, uh, where we've shot a lot of different types of flowers in a lot of different ways. They might give you a little bit of inspiration for your own flower photography. If you are inspired and you do want to give a, uh, this style of flower photography a go, make sure to let me know down in the comments how you get on. If you've enjoyed the video and learned something, make sure to give the video a like. And if you want to see more flower photography, and macro photography tutorials in the future, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button, which will notify you every time we upload a new video. For now though, guys, thank you very much for watching. and I'll see you next time.